Nine months ago, I started one of my most ambitious projects ever, creating a voxel game in the Knights of Cube world. My game engine of choice was Unity, things were going well, I had to learn how to do network programming, we had play sessions, it was a blast. But a curse I've had with Unity is, it doesn't matter how well you think you structure your projects, it's eventually going to feel like a complete spaghetti mess. Is it on me or does that happen to you as well? Six months into the project, I decided to remake everything from scratch. I would not be using Unity. I wanted to use the Rust programming language. Every time I worked in C Sharp, I would always come to issues that made me think, hmm, how would this look like in Rust? I missed Rust. So I started again from scratch. I had to learn a bunch of new things. Graphics programming, voxel generation, multi-threading, how to properly structure Rust projects. I have learned so many things from making this without a game engine. Things were looking good until something happened. I am happy to announce I've remade it once again, third time's the charm. Okay, it's not as bad as it sounds like. Don't worry, I'm still using Rust. The difference is I have moved all of my caveman code into the game engine that is called, say it with me, Bevy. Some of you saw that coming. Boom! A bevy, bevy, bevy. Bevy, bevy, bevy is a very new, exciting, yet young game engine for the Rust programming language. The whole ecosystem is based around a really powerful data-driven entity component system. But before diving into why I chose remaking all of my code, let's talk about the issue at hand. Why did I lose my mind deciding once again to remake my voxel game for the third time? Well, a simple yet tiny thing prompted this entire move. Last episode I added a command line window and a logging system. I decided I want to implement the function that will toggle the rendering method to use a wireframe. By typing wireframe, then true or false, we can modify the rendering system through this command line for the game. That sounds easy enough, except the way you design the commands in my game engine is the commands doesn't have access to anything at the moment. I could pass in a reference to the render system to the command system, but where would it end? Okay, I need the command to access the player inventory, pass in a reference to the inventory. Okay, I need this command to modify the skybox, pass in a reference to the skybox. Okay, as you can see, that's a no-go. But Tan Tan, you could use a singleton. No, we're not making a spaghetti here, we're trying to make a lasagna. <laughs> Speaking of good lasagna project architecture, you should check out Core, the sponsor of this video. Okay. <laughs> Core is a new free PC gaming platform that lets you create, share and play 3D multiplayer games. With Core, no coding or art skills are required. There are thousands of free music, sound and art assets that you can use to start making games right away. Since Core is powered by Unreal Engine, you can create games with high quality AAA graphics. You can also make everything from scratch, or modify and reimagine content from other creators. Check out this spell I made for fun. I simply took a gun preset, swapped a few things around and BAM! We have a flower that shoots flowers. Flower power! But if you like to code like me, you have the option to do so with Lua. I want some more flowers in my game, so let's spawn some in. Okay, I might have gone a bit overboard with this spawning script. Since Core has built-in multiplayer, it is super easy to publish your game instantly, so you and your friends can play your game. You can even earn money with Core and monetize your games with the Perks program. Core shares 50% of the revenue with their creators. Many Core creators have been able to pay their bills, buy their dream cars, and quit their day jobs with the help of the Perks program. Core is completely free, so use the link in the description below to download Core and start playing and creating games today. As you can see, I was losing my mind trying to solve this wireframe command issue. I started rethinking my entire project structure. Uh, I can make some sort of event system where commands issue events. So the commands pass this wireframe event and all of the events trickle down to all of the systems. But wait, should all my game systems work with events now? If I wanna spawn an enemy, does that have to be an event? Uh... In my desperation, a single word entered my mind. Say it with me, Bevy. Okay, I'm making this way too dramatic. So Bevy, why do I feel like Bevy will solve a lot of issues for me when it comes to project architecture? In order to explain that, let me summarize how Bevy first works. 
Here comes the cold parts, grab yourself a cup of coffee, don't forget to like and subscribe also. Here's how Bevy works in a nutshell. In this entity component system, we deal with three different things. Components, systems and resources. Components are data, it could be anything, a struct, an enum. Systems acts on these components. Data that we want entities to share like textures, speed settings, that could be wrapped in what's called a resource. That's the basics, let's make a small example of a game to see how it all comes together. We want our entities to be able to be hungry in our game, so let's make a component called hunger. It's just a struct that contains a value of how hungry our entity is. Zero is not hungry at all, and one is starvation. We want all of our entities to become hungry over time, so let's make a system that does exactly that. We are going to query all of the entities in the game that contains a hunger component. We're going to iterate through all of these components, and what do we do? Well, we increase the hunger. This function will be called every game tick. Let's also print out the value of the hunger. Let's put it into action, we need some hungry entities. So let's spawn two of them. Let's call them Bob and uh, Humongous. Bob entity should have the hunger component because it can be hungry. Bob will start out super hungry, so a value of 1, and Humongous, well he is pleased, he gets a value of 0. If we run our game nothing will happen because we need to hook up the system into the Bevy ecosystem. We add this function into the Bevy ecosystem and BAM! Amazing! We have two entities that become hungry over time. That's how Bevy works in a nutshell. Now let me show you the power of this ecosystem. Printing out a hunger value is a nice thing we can have to debug our game. But let's say we might not always want this printing feature. We need a way to toggle if the printing will happen or not. Oh, sure enough, we can make an if statement in here to check for that. But as you can see, this code is already starting to become a bit messy. This system we wrote should only be responsible for handling the actual hungering part, <laughs> if you can say that. Printing doesn't have anything to do with that. So let's do it this way instead. Let's make a new system called print hunger status system. We query the components and print out their values. Now we can enable or disable this printing feature by simply not adding the system or adding the system to the Bevy ecosystem. That's cool and all, but let me show you some actual practical things I've already started building with the third version of the voxel game. Take a look on this. This is currently how the world generates visually. Shanks spawn a certain distance down and then they animate up to its correct position. When they despawn, they also animate down. This animation feature was surprisingly easy to add thanks to Bevy. The way it works is every shank you see visually is an entity with a mesh. When I spawn a shank entity, I also attach a spawn animation component. That is all I have to do to make it animate. I made this animation component I wrote the systems for it, and all it does is modify the transform over time. And the beautiful thing is, I can just add this component to anything, and it will just work. Let's say I want skeletons to spawn in from the ground. Well, I can just attach this component, and the system I wrote will do its magic. Here's another cool example. I want to be able to tweak how the world generates. Some sort of level editor type of thing. The data for how the world generates are wrapped into a struct as a resource in the Bevy system. I can access this data from anywhere in the Bevy ecosystem. So I made this utility tool to be able to tweak values of basically anything. The system I wrote will automatically spawn a window showcasing the values that we're modifying. And I also added to the system that you can hook up a MIDI controller and modify the world generation live. Here's a beautiful thing, I can enable or disable this tweaking system and nothing in the game will be affected. This is a lasagna! I think you get the point, Bevy is pretty cool. And on a side note, I haven't seen any noticeable difference in performance comparing my caveman engine to the Bevy version. The underlying voxel engine I made is pretty much the same. The only difference to this version and the previous version is how things are executed. Instead of having a mega class I had previously that handles everything with world generation, the so called mega class is now the Bevy ecosystem. Maybe I want to make a command to reload all of the chunks. Instead of interacting with the mega class, I'm just gonna ask for this specific part from the ecosystem. 
Give me the queue that unloads all of the chunks. And I'm going to enqueue all of the current chunks. Shablam! We can make a command to unload all of the chunks. Just like that. Wait! Hold on a minute! Before I send out a bunch of people excited to learn how to use Bevy, I have to warn you. Bevy is in a very early stage at the making of this video. If you're making a serious game and considering using Bevy, you might need to be the kind of a person that can dig into the source code of the engine. I've had to do so many times to figure out how things work. Me wanting all of the latest features of Bevy, I'm personally not sitting on the latest stable release of Bevy, I'm sitting in their main branch of the public GitHub repository. With that comes a lot of digging through the source code to fix things that may not work yet. You want skeletal animation? Well, you're gonna have to wait a little while, cause that's not a thing yet, I don't believe so. Prepare to do a lot of digging sometimes. I hope I conveyed to you how Bevy works and why it's such a cool ecosystem. But here my warning, it's in a very early stage. I think it's time we summarize my journey. Wanting to make a game like Cube World, I started out with Unity. Code base turned into spaghetti, and I love Rust. Why am I not using Rust? I moved over to Rust, but I got existential dread because my project architecture needed some thinking. I remade it all from scratch. Well, I had the voxel engine, but I needed to refactor every part of it, so that I can have this really neat project structure thanks to Bevy Bevy Bevy. This is the story of how I remade my voxel game three times. I wonder when the fourth remake will happen. Hopefully never, I wanna make a game now. Also, don't forget to check out Core. It is completely free. Use the link in the description to get started. Roll the outro.